Ever since I uploaded my first behind the scenes where this camera card showed up, you guys kept asking me, what is it? Is it worth it? And how do we use it on set? So in this video, I want to go over all of these questions. This isn't necessarily supposed to be a review of this camera card, but more an overview of how I use it and if I think it's worth it on set and how this actually makes my life a lot easier. So let's get right into it and answer the first question. What is it? This is an Edicam Max Plus camera card. It has four wheels, two shelves, and you can use it for multiple different things, which I will explain later in the video. There's different brands, different models, and different sizes. I personally went for a brand called Edicam, and again, this is the Edicam Max Plus, and I think that Edicam offers the best bang for the buck. It's still on the pricier side, but there are competitors that are way more expensive, and if you really want high quality, then I think the Edicam is a really great choice, and after using it on multiple sets, I can definitely confirm this. I went for the biggest version, the Max Plus, and people keep asking me if they should go with a smaller version, if I regret getting the biggest version, and I do not regret it. I think this is the perfect size. I wouldn't want to go smaller because as soon as you start working on it, you start rigging out your camera and changing lenses, etc., then there isn't a lot of space left here. So if I had the smaller version, I would have probably regretted it. So if you do have the space in your car and you don't need to fit it constantly into very small elevators, then I highly recommend going for the biggest version. I also spent a bit more money on the 10 inch wheels and I do not regret this either because sometimes you don't know where you end up with your camera card and I think spending the extra money was worth it too. The only difference between the plus models and the non plus models is this little ledge right here and this also comes in really handy because if you use this as a workstation and I will talk about this a little later then you can just unfold this and then you don't have to hunch over like I am right now and you can just open this up and then it's way easier if you're working on a laptop or if you're working on this at all. So now that we established what it is let's talk about what it is for and my first use case is transportation. The first thing we do when we arrive on set is we build up our camera card and this takes less than five minutes. You can do it by yourself, but with two people, it's even easier. Like I already mentioned, you don't need any tools. Everything is really intuitive and again, takes less than five minutes. Once the camera card is set up, we start loading it up and the max version is rated at up to 250 kilograms, which is over 500 pounds. So you don't have to worry about anything and you can start loading up all of your sandbags, shot bags, camera equipment, all of your camera cases, lenses, lights, etc., etc. And with this, it's so much easier to bring all of your equipment to your first shooting location and you don't have to do multiple trips and you're not completely sweaty and exhausted by carrying all of your sandbags and your heavy cases from your car to the shooting location. But this usually isn't the only time where I use this for transportation purposes, but we also use this whenever we have to do a company move. What is a company move? It basically means that when we take all of our equipment from one shooting location to another shooting location, then this comes in very, very handy as well. And moving all of your equipment from one shooting location to the other, especially if you have to do it multiple times a day, that is an absolute game changer. The camera card has so many ways of attaching stuff to it. You can attach regular stuff via 3 8 inch screw holes, but you can also use a C-stand column. You have a lot of attachments for baby pins and that comes in really, really handy. As you can see here on my right side, I have a C-stand column with a dovetail quick release plate. So I can take my fully rigged out red camera and quickly attach it to the camera card. And then I can just push the camera card instead of having to carry the camera by myself. I also have an attachment for a gimbal ring, which I use a lot. So I can also hook this up to the camera card and don't have to carry the gimbal by myself. And you can totally get creative with it. I also have a 19 inch production monitor on here. And on some sets, I even use the baby pin attachments to attach several lights to it. So it's even easier to just carry everything from one location to the other. On the bottom shelf, I usually put all of the suitcases as well as my big camera bag and other little things so that I don't have to carry them manually myself either. There's even attachments for C-stands as well as tripods, but you can also make them fit just by putting them underneath or hanging them from the side from the handles. So again, you can get creative with it and you can just customize this camera card just the way that you need it. 
So now you might be wondering, is it really worth it to spend so much money just to not have to carry your equipment sometimes? And I can honestly say it is. We had this one client whom we produced videos for over the course of two to three years, and they had a huge area to cover. And usually when we show up to these kind of jobs, we have one handheld camera like this, and then we have a B camera constantly hooked up to a gimbal with a gimbal ring. So what I usually did is I had my handheld camera in one hand and then I had the gimbal ring in the other. And when we had to move from one location to the other, I was just carrying it with both my hands. And immediately after we got there, I started shooting, then go to the next location. At the end of a 10 hour shooting day, I was completely beat. More so from carrying all my camera equipment rather than shooting with it. Then I also had the rest of the crew carry all the lights, the C-stand, the sandbags and all the rest of the equipment. So as you can imagine, just putting almost all of your equipment on this camera card and just easily pushing it does save a lot of strength. Okay, but what if we don't need to do a lot of company moves? If we shoot on location where we don't need to move around a lot or even in a studio, how do we use our camera card then? Another scenario is using it as a first AC station and just basically having a mobile workstation wherever you go, which has enough space to just comfortably rig out a camera, change lenses, change filters, etc., etc., is also a huge game changer because I found myself just huddling on the floor over some lenses with the camera in my lap, trying to change something around on the camera, which really isn't fun. So having this basically mobile table, which also has a soft surface. So if you're changing lenses or you're handling filters, you don't have to worry about scratching anything because you could just like put it down and then you can rig out everything. You don't have to worry about losing your lens caps or your screws. So I can say that just having this as a workstation for the first AC or even if you're by yourself with an assistant, just to make changes to your camera, rig it out in the beginning, Again, balancing your gimbal, all these kind of things comes in really, really handy. So now that our cameras are set up, our gimbal is balanced, we don't need to change lenses and filters anymore, what do we do with the camera card then? Then there's also two more use cases. Number one is the video village. As you can see here, we have an Atomos 19 SE production monitor, and I bring this to higher budget shoots for our clients to look at. So you don't have the client hover over either the first AC who's pulling focus or over you operating the camera to see what's going on. So you can have them just look at a 19 inch monitor, also good for a director, or if you're the director yourself, then you have a bigger image to look at. And I hook this up directly to the camera card so even if we have to move or if we don't have to move, then we do have a mobile station for a production monitor. Usually on the opposite side from our director's slash client monitor, we also hook up another smaller monitor for the first AC to pull focus from. And this is usually on the opposite side of our director's slash client monitor so that the first AC can pull focus in peace and they don't have to worry about somebody just looking over the shoulder all the time. The last scenario that we've been using this camera card on set is as a mobile workstation. So if you have a producer on set or a data intake technician, or just you as the DP or the director want to look at some scripts and the storyboard again, it's so convenient to just put down one or even two laptops and just work from there. And you can just copy over some footage, you can look at your scripts, you can make changes to the storyboard. And again, just having a mobile workstation where you, the producer or somebody else can work from and they don't have to sit on the floor with their laptop because there's no table around, comes in really, really handy, especially when you're outdoors. A last scenario that I haven't personally used it for, but I'm looking forward to trying it is as a mobile dolly, for example, not necessarily for a camera, but you could try this too, but also for lights. So if you have a moving shot and you need a mobile light that is bigger than something that you could just like handheld, then this could come in really handy and you can hook up a really big light with a big softbox and then you can just move it along your talent and therefore have a mobile light source. So now at the end of the video, let's talk about two downsides with this camera card. Number one is the price. This is definitely an expensive investment. I think I paid more than 3000 euros for everything, including all the accessories. 
and that is definitely not cheap. However, if you end up making the investment for your production company, I can safely say that you can probably use this for 10 plus years. So the 3000 ish dollars you're going to spend on it is kind of relative in the end. Downside number two is to wait. It's really nice and convenient that you can put all the accessories inside, fold it up, and then you can carry it around, even transport it via the wheels that are attached to the camera card. However, it is really, really heavy. So if you need to lug it into your car by yourself, you're going to have a hard time because it's also not really great to handle, especially the bigger version. So you probably end up having to have a second person helping you load it into your car and out of your car. Of course, you can also store the wheels and all the accessories separately, and then the entire thing will weigh way less. So that is an option as well. But overall, just keep in mind, this thing is heavy to be transported by yourself. And there you have it. This is how we use this camera card on our productions. And if you have any more questions or you have a unique use case for it yourself, then let me know down in the comments below. And I will also link this camera card as well as all the accessories that I deemed necessary for it in the description below. And I hope you liked this video, you learned something. And if you did, then please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. Subscribe for more, I would really appreciate it. And I hope to see you on the next one.